Turmoil in the streets of Venezuela. International condemnation of the government. Tens of thousands of protesters. Shortages of everything, from money to food. People rummage through rubbish. Nicolas Maduro, get out. Keeping that dictatorship afloat. Giving American diplomats 72 hours to leave the country. President Trump. They fired rubber bullets and tear gas. The protest against the government's been going on for months. Three million Venezuelans have left their country. Political turmoil in Venezuela. They've been building the barricades across Venezuela for days. This video series is my account of spending two weeks as a tourist in Venezuela. What you are about to see is what I personally witnessed whilst in the country. Nothing more, nothing less. But the guys didn't didn't want the car. Did you just tell us, please, get in the car? We should do both. Buenos dias, guys. Coming to you again from Caracas in Venezuela, the capital city. Uh, today I'm wearing pants because I'm about to go downstairs meet a man called Davis. I'm uh, going to jump on the back of his motorbike and we are going to head up into the hills. We're going to um, the second biggest favela, uh, barrios, or in English, slum, in Latin America. So it's going to be a very interesting experience. We have uh, about four, four motorbikes going with, I think, like two people on them. Each going to be meeting up with Lenny again, the guy you met in yesterday's video. We're in touch with a politician there, so it should be all kosher and pretty safe. Let's head down and out into this big beautiful city here out in that direction so let's go jump on the bike So we just took a motorbike ride as you can see uh, through some pretty tight little spots in between buses and things but we've made it to the bottom of this area which is called Patare. There's a big uh, beautiful pink uh, colonial church here and up in the dis up in the distance here I'm not sure if you can make it out but that's where we're headed up to the main kind of uh, barrios area there. This is the start of Patare the slum this is the more nice area and then we're going to head up a bit further but it's a nice little atmosphere community atmosphere. We've just come a bit further into uh, Patare. Uh, we've stopped at an empanada place. We're gonna grab a little bit of food before we head deeper, but yeah. It's quite nice vibes around here. So we just pulled over because one of the motorbikes got a flat tire, uh, so they're just getting it fixed across the road here but there's absolutely stunning views of the mountains here and now we're going up into the hills up here should get some really nice views as well as seeing more of the streets so getting the tire fixed actually took quite a long time and we looked over and saw the petrol station on the other side of the road and we thought we'd go and investigate as there is a petrol crisis going on and we found a man to interview. So are we, we, ¿cuánto, ¿Cuánto tiempo tiene que esperar después que se va la gasolina? Mira, más que todo, bueno, cinco horas, tres horas, depende, pero si ahorita llegando gasolina... Okay, he's telling me that uh, since three hours ago there is, there is no gas here, so, but sometimes they have to wait five or six hours to wait for another truck with the, with the gas and the fuel is very cheap here. There is no price at all. If you want to pay whatever you need, you have there, you can pay 50, 10, 100 bolivares, it's nothing. It's like a gift for her, for him. If somebody doesn't have how to pay the gas, the fuel, well, it's free for you. So what's the point? The point is, this is not working. You can pay with food or you can pay with 
cigarettes or something you, they, you, you want to pay. It's, 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 but it's so, free. so what's the point of, of having working here and when you can't make any money? Yeah, oh, of course they can. they can. But I mean like the, the petrol station. Ah, oh, well. Awful. This is yeah. the bizarre, the bizarre, bizarre uh, economy, bizarre situation here. The gasoline is uh, it's priority in our country, in every country it's priority, but the government just give it because it would be a huge problem for them if there is no gasoline at all. So they're losing a lot of money because they have to pay Yes, we, we lose a lot of money. All the pumps are working, but well, so it works, but there, is, there are no, no gasoline right now. You can show this. Either of these is working. And you think that this will get solved anytime soon? I hope when, when we change, we will, uh, we will solve this. Only when we change this government, this regime has to uh, go apart and, and let other people solve this situation here. Right. Okay. Well, thank you. Gracias, papá. What's the number, Yes. It's okay to film? Yeah, yeah, film. They are, they are traveling through Valencia. It's like four hours for here, two hours from here, and they are taking his own gasoline there because there are no gas at all in the pump services of the highways so okay. you must take your own gasoline for traveling if there is no gasoline at all here in caracas everything is closed for but, and will be pro protest yeah. everybody will see that and they don't want they uh, they us to protest right, they don't want us to protest in the countryside there's no petrol there is no pet there is no oil or uh, gasoline outside okay it's a problem to find it and is this legal to drive around with Well, now on the in roof? Venezuela, it is a complete anarchy, so you can do whatever you want. Right. I don't know how much of that you caught, but the petrol is pretty much free. And any money that people decide to pay or things they decide to give, like you can even give cigarettes or cookies to the, the pump guys, the guys that put petrol in your car, and they get to keep that. That doesn't go to this government-owned petrol station. So basically the government's just keeping this afloat, supplying the fuel so people don't lose their minds and start uprising again. But there's no petrol here. People keep driving in trying to find petrol, but all the workers here just sitting there, they don't get paid if there's no petrol because the money that is given to the people for the petrol goes to the individuals. So strangest situation I've ever seen in my life. Very sad, very sad story indeed. Anyway, we're still waiting the, for the tire to get fixed, and then we're going to head head up into the to the slum a bit further. After that motorbike ride, we've come all the way up. What I'm about to show you is Patare, which is disputed to be possibly the largest slum in the whole of Latin America, or the largest favela, or barrios, whatever you choose to call it. The reason that uh, some people say this is bigger than the one in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, is because it's all connected to each other. So the one in Rio apparently has the largest number of people, but it's separated. This one is continuous. What I'm, what I'm about to show you is just a third of it. There's three more mountains exactly like this. So it's said that about one million people live here. And soon we're gonna go deeper into the slum. We're gonna go check out a school and a, a soup kitchen for the children. We're gonna see how the whole project works. But for now, take a look at these shots and just witness the magic of what we are looking at right now. Are they at school at the moment? or? I thought that the school must be very near from here. But let's ask. Okay. Where are they? Mariscal, 12 de febrero. ¿Y aquí cerca? Sí, aquí arriba. Ah, yeah, they are from a school near from here, from up there. Uh -huh. And they are coming here to make their, for gathering and share 
food and nice day out. It is a nice place. Gracias. Gracias. Ciao. 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 Ella, she want to meet you because she's uh, okay. a YouTuber. Para que Hola. Que <laughs> <laughs> Ay, Dios mío. <laughs> Ay, oh my God. <laughs> really They will give you a hug. <laughs> Okay. Ah, no. <laughs> 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 okay. Bueno, chao, chao, niño. Yeah. Yeah. I think I Bye. So we just drove for another 20 minutes or so and now we're arriving at the uh, soup kitchen. So we're just walking through the um, favelas now, little kids. This is Nick. 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 So this is Andras and uh, can you just tell us about your projects here with the soup kitchens? Yes, right now we have like a, like a very a disaster here in Venezuela. Where people are dying because of lack of, of food, of hunger. So we started this program to help each other like in this crisis to uh -huh. at least ha have one meal at the table. So we have uh, here in Petare 30 uh, soup kitchens like like this one uh, a house of a person that they open their houses right now the kids are arriving here so okay. they can have a, a meal right. for much of these kids this is the only meal they can have at the during the day like they only eat once a day in these soup kitchens because of the economic situations we have right now in Venezuela the minimum salary is 40,000 bolivares that's less than ten dollars uh, like a, 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 a month, like six dollars, and you don't, you can't buy anything with that right. money. So they can't afford like the food for their family and right. for their kids. And do you have a website? If somebody's watching this video now, do you have a website where yes. people can donate money? Yes, we have a, a GoFundMe. Okay. I can give you the GoFundMe. I'll leave the link below. Okay, the link. If anybody wants to Okay, donate, that's really nice. We almost all the money we we receive is by a website, by a GoFundMe. Okay. We started that way. It's incredible because in the worst crisis we have, we also have like the best stories of solidarity and how everyone can help. They don't have money right now to help, but they have their heart yeah. and their, their work. It's beautiful and it's like more more powerful than, than money. Maria, she's the owner of the house. Look, the problem of water. And they drink this? Or? Yes, this is the water they use for everything. There's no running water here? No. From taps? No. So where does this come from? Is this rainwater? No, they, they receive it. It only arrives here Thursday, okay. once a week. So they use this water to cook, to clean their cell and to and, drink. And to drink. Okay. And is it is it sanitary or do people, can they get sick? No, it no, it's sanitary. Okay. It has a como se dice cloro clorum. It, 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 it is chloride. Uh, yes, chloride. Yeah, yeah. It has chloride. Okay. Okay. So they are cooking a soup. Just vegetable soup or? No, it has meat. Okay. You see like the brown thing and beans. Right. Sometimes it has beans. And most of this comes from donations on donations. your GoFundMe. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, this is potato. Okay. Look, they are like the potato. For us, one kid uh, can eat for $10 a month. Yeah. So we give them meal every day for $10 a month. So 30 meals for so $10. Yes, one uh, 30 meals for ten dollars yeah. exactly. But it is very cheap because people we use like the the kitchens of the people oh, in the slum, 
people uh, uh, help us for free yeah. and we only like use the money to to find the, the food yeah. and to take it to the to the soup kitchens right like this one but I mean like if you know like Maria you can see she's like putting all her things her kitchen her ta plates her table for the every soup day. kitchen every day every so day it's incredible every day all day yes mm -hmm. all day wow it's incredible beautiful y la poseta, el fregadero lo tenemos allí, okay. pero no hemos podido hacer nada porque no conseguimos cemento. They want to build their bathroom okay. in this place. Y ya tenemos los puntos aquí adentro. They, they want, so they have like here the, the things of the bathroom, okay. but they haven't find money like to build right. their bathroom. So they don't have bathroom in their house. Okay. So they have to use the bathroom in on uh, her uh, sister, I, okay. I think, in the, near, in the right. house near. <laughs> you can see the difference, for example, every kid, they bring their own, their own container. Plate, yep. container. This is like a um margarine container yeah. so they don't have played mm -hmm. maybe in their house and this is a container they use que se llama Nueva Zelanda. ¿Alguien sabe dónde está en Nueva Zelanda? No. Oh, no saben dónde está. They don't know where is New Zealand. New Zealand. That's <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah
So just come up onto the roof of the school. We went past a, a couple of really nice looking classrooms and uh, again that money actually came from UNICEF so UNICEF helped them tidy up the school. The school has 700 students, 350 in the morning and 350 in the afternoon. And just like that, I am back at the hotel. Yeah, I don't really need to explain what we saw today. I think you can, you know, you saw it. I'm gonna plug that link again, that GoFundMe, if you wanna drop some money down there, whatever you can afford, $1, $0.50, $2, $10, remember, buys 30 meals for a child, so. Andras, the man that you met that was explaining the project in the soup kitchens, he said that if we didn't have anything to do with the soup kitchens, because he's one of the directors of the project there, he said that if we weren't connected to that, which is a very positive thing, then there's no question, he said, that we would have been robbed because it's such a positive influence in the community. People uh, respect that. So they don't want to disrespect the people that are creating that positive change by feeding kids in need. So to go through there without Andras and, and Lenny and the people that are known in the community for, for their kind of kindness and their generosity and their management of the, these systems, then you are just, uh, you know, a sitting duck just waiting to be robbed. I mean, that's the biggest slum in Latin America, debatably. So a big thank you to Andras, who's taking care of that project there. The petrol situation, that was extremely unique, like you saw. And uh, we, when we were waiting for the tire to get fixed, we looked in the window of the petrol station. They were selling toilet paper, two rolls of toilet paper, which was 21,000. And that is over half of the average monthly salary. So if two rolls of toilet paper is half the monthly salary, then seriously, it's incomprehensible what's going on and free petrol, no food. So where we've been kind of hanging out uh, and, and visiting the areas there, more of the kind of opposition, areas but tomorrow we're going to the the like the pro government areas it's going to be interesting it's going to be a whole new scene the people here are so kind and so welcoming and so loving and uh, warm it's beautiful especially like i said in yesterday's video in the face of this diversity they still have this warmth and this this there's a real sense of camaraderie here it is very strong you know there are criminals and things which is you know inevitable in a situation like this but uh, the majority of people do get on. In case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Thank you so much for watching. The Brown Window okay. is the name of, of the song. Hágame el favor, compadre leve, llegue esa ventana marroncita, toque tres canciones bien bonitas, pa' si no me importa si se ofende. Que yo le canto con el arma, ay, para esa linda morenita. <laughs>